Hi, this is Chris with Swift Mobile, and I'm going to walk you through the dashboard and the interface for Swift Mobile, uh, give you an idea of how it works, how it functions, and uh, um, hopefully give you an idea of what to expect from the product. This right here is the Swift Mobile dashboard. As you can see here, uh, this is actually uh, running from a web browser, or as you could probably gather. Uh, now this is indicative of what you would expect on a tablet. On a smartphone, these buttons that you can see here are stacked atop one, of another, one another, similar to the way this is right here. As you can see on the dashboard, it's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty simple interface. We have some core sections. We have the contacts and companies section up here at the top. This is reflective of your CRM um, with your um, uh, contacts and, and your contact management. Um, your contact management uh, capabilities. Right here in my deadlines is sort of your day, your, your my day um, on your CRM uh, wherein you can see at a glance all of your appointments, your tasks, and the follow-ups that you're working on. These buttons are drop-downable and you can see the different um, appointments with their date, the time that they're taking place, the title of the appointment, the title of the task, you can see the the description as well as the contact record associated with it. We also make it very easy for you to just simply hop into the appointment or hop into the contact record. You can even add tasks and appointments on the fly directly from here and as I said you can see all of your opportunities that you're following up with. Down here you'll also see that you have easy access to your calendar within Swift, the contacts that you yourself in the field are assigned, as well as the workflow activities that you've completed, the outcome buttons that you've triggered within your Swift. Up here at the top, you'll see in the contacts and company section a near me button. This near me configures around your device's native location management capabilities. You'll see here from my current location, which is in this demo environment in Lexington, Kentucky, I have all of these contacts that are sorted from closest to farthest. These contacts can be filtered. You can change the record count from about 20 to 200. You can filter down to a street level if that's important for you. You can filter down to the side of the street if that's important for you. At Swift we configure your environment around your business model so that it works best for you and your business. These contacts can be displayed on a map using the Near Me feature and you'll see here that they are color coded um, green in this case for prospects. There's no customers in this view but if there were you would see some blue balloons. Orange being the color coding indicating my current location. So this allows you to really conceptualize the part of town you're in and all of your contacts, leads, and uh, potential business opportunities uh, from your current location. And with Swift, it's, and we make it very easy for you out in the field to, to find these contacts, to easily route your way to them, and to easily hop into the contact records. And that's what we're going to do right now. From this contact record, you can see that there are standard fields populated immediately. There is no phone number in this record, so I'll just go ahead and quickly show you how to add that. We'll hop into Edit Contact. And you'll see, just at a glance, these are all the fields of information that you can capture in Swift uh, just out of the box, as well as sync to your CRM out of the box. As you can see, the address is updated phone number is updated and the email is updated. With a click of a button you can route your way to the contact from the contact record. You can call them or you can send them an email. You scroll down you'd be able to see what company records are associated with the contact, what sales opportunities have been set. In this case in this demo environment which is for a roofing company we can see that Michael Fitzpatrick has flagged this particular contact as a sales opportunity for a new roof and the, in the stage that they are in they've expressed interest. If you had a next action date and notes associated with your next action this would all display right here as well. Under current activities you can see 
your um, oldest opportunity, your oldest activity to your newest activity. In this case, all these activities were appointments. There were no tasks on this particular record, but you can see that all these appointments were roof inspections. Scrolling down even further, you can see where notes would appear. You can easily add notes and tie them to a contact record, and this will sync instantaneously over to your CRM. Scrolling down even further, we get to the documents section. From here, you'll see the completed documents within Swift Mobile displayed from newest to oldest. Click these buttons and these documents can be emailed over to your inbox. You can also see at a glance all of the workflow outcomes that have occurred. And we'll hop into workflow in a second, but as you can see, uh, this is a, basically a, a chronology of the most recent um, uh, re uh, field rep interaction with a client to the oldest and uh, it's filtered by program, by the user, uh, by the outcome and if there are any comments associated with them those would appear right here as well. Now let's hop into workflow so I can show you that. Workflow is entirely configurable around your business model. Uh, within workflow you can have several different drop downs. In this case, this particular demo environment has a canvasser actions drop down as well as a customer interested drop down. Now, this particular business, what they use Swift for is they go door to door and knock on houses to see if they can solicit their roofing services. So, when one of their field guys gets to a residence, they already have a pre configured list of outcomes that can occur. In this case, was the uh, resident with another company? Were they not home? Were they able to set an appointment? You can click these buttons and when you click not home, it can tr it'll trigger an outcome within Swift that you'll be able to run reports on later. So you'll have that information uh, very easily, very conveniently built within the platform and for your records. This information can also be configured to sync over to your native CRM, be it Infusionsoft, Salesforce, Contractors Cloud, whatever have you. And then in that sense, we can trigger some of the automation on those platforms as well from Swift. When this particular client or this particular company clicks interested under customer interested, the user is sent to a mobile form. Now mobile forms is one of the coolest aspects of Swift Mobile. With our mobile forms, we are actually able to digitize and create electronic copies of your company's forms and documentation. Basically, we can create digital versions of those forms that you're getting filled out in the field and capture that information that you want to capture on the go, paperless, in real time, syncing into the cloud. So in this particular instance, you can see that this canvasser form is already pre-populated uh, with the client's uh, contact information. This is synced from the contact record that I generated the form from. You can add additional information. We can add as many uh, standard or custom fields as you would like uh, within your form. You can add secondary contact information, alternate contact information. The address, as you can see, is auto-populated as it is tied to a contact. And then from here, we can also trigger uh, uh, horizontal buttons, vertical buttons, yes or no, check boxes, um, drop downs, basically whatever necessary to capture your information the way you want to that replicates uh, your your current documentation, your current forms, or just makes it easy uh, for you to run your business. And we would do all of that for you guys as a configuration. So in this particular instance, this roofing company wants to be able to capture mm -hmm. the information about uh, whether or not the property that they're visiting is a commercial property or a residential property. They want to be able to capture what type of roof, the number of stories, their insurance information, and as you can see here, there's a red asterisk denoting that this field is required. Uh, we can make it so that this form cannot be submitted until certain information is inputted. Down here at the bottom, uh, you'll see the option to capture a signature. This is an option that we can also require uh, for our uh, mobile uh, users to 
uh, include within their forms before they can submit them. Um, and this allows us to make uh, our mobile forms and your Swift documentation, so to speak, uh, replicate a, a pen and paper contract or order form as closely as possible. Another cool feature that we can add to your mobile forms is an appointment team scheduler. So in this particular instance, I, out in the field, am able to schedule appointments with people that are on different sales teams or in different uh, um, uh, operational uh, 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 deals within the company. So if I'm a sales guy but I'm not qualified to do a roof inspection, I'm able to click this drop down and click roof inspection and see who is available at this given time for an appointment. And then I can make that uh, scheduling uh, decision myself, a canvasser out in the field uh, without having to call and uh, go through calendars to check everyone's schedule individually. We can also set it so that there's other roles, other drop downs here, so that if uh, there's different other, if there's even more types of activities that occur within your business, even more types of different uh, appointments that can be scheduled, we can account for those within Swift as well. Now, when I click submit at the end of this order form, this mobile form, it generates a PDF, and this is a really cool option that we have at Swift Mobile. Uh, this generates a PDF that's instantly emailed to home office as well as to the customer so that you both have a record. And also, when I did that schedule appointment thing at the bottom, it scheduled an appointment with my sales rep or my uh, roof inspector in this case. Uh, so that roof inspector has been notified that he has now had an appointment scheduled around 12 uh, for a roof inspection with Billy Bob. And you can also see here that I have... Um, received a emailed version of that order form that I just completed. Going back to the dashboard, hopefully things make a little bit more sense now that you've seen a contact record. Uh, we can easily search across the database into all of your contact records. Um, a lot of uh, mobile applications native to CRMs come with some limitations when it comes to searching. With Swift, we can add as many search fields as you'd like. So if you want to be able to search by a contact's first name, just their first name or just their last name, we can set a field for that. If you want to just search by their address, this can be the only field that appears under search. Um, we can add fields for custom uh, search criteria. We can add fields for standard search criteria across your CRM. It makes no difference to us. Uh, we're configuring Swift to work the best around your business model. Going back to the dashboard again, I'm going to show you how to add new. And this is very simple, very straightforward, uh, but oddly enough, um, it, it, it becomes one of the most crucial and important aspects of Swift. When you're on the go, and even if you're going to a property or a company, a business, um, often you'll find yourselves as a salesperson out in the field finding that you uh, are meeting a new point of contact or the point of contact you had in the past isn't the person that you need to be talking to. So with Swift, you're, we make it very easy for you to add a new contact or company record on the fly from your mobile device so you don't have to jot down a person's information and then enter it in into your CRM at home. So with this, I'm going to select if this person's a prospect or a customer. In this case, I'll stick it uh, with prospect. I'm going to set a location from map. I can manually type all this information, but a cool aspect of Swift and its location management capabilities is that you can actually pull up a map view, and this will run on your mobile device in addition to a tablet or a browser like I'm using right now, and you can just select the property that you are in front of or out in front of, and it'll auto populate the address into these fields. So that way you don't have to manually type it and potentially get something wrong. Now, you can enter in all the information that you know about the client. Directly from this 
individual add new page, I'm able to submit this contact and when I submit it, it generates a new contact record. Uh, I can submit it and then get sent to the new contact record page I can, or I can submit it and get sent to that workflow screen. In this case, I'm just going to submit it and go to the workflow screen and you'll see that I'm back at this menu. If I do it this way, oh, that, that was a different contact, my bad. You'll see that all the information that I just included and generated from the add new has created and generated a contact for Tim Robbins. All the, the fields that I showed you previously up here. I can click edit contact and add new information that I didn't add before. Very easy to do from Swift. Now let's take a look at some of these appointment and task records so I can show you what the task uh, uh, records and the items look like. From this appointment screen, I can see the start and end time of my appointment. I can change the day. And I can easily change the time of the appointment itself. I can set it as an all-day appointment if I'd like, and I can specify what type of appointment it is. Is it a standard appointment? Is it a phone call appointment? I can do all of that very easily from the Swift uh, appointment scheduling. I can even flag an appointment as completed when I finished it. So let's click Save and see how this updates. Clicking the appointment dropdown, I can see that the date has changed. Very easy to use and very straightforward. Now let's set a task. Maybe I want to set a task, uh, but it doesn't have an appointment or it doesn't have a, a, an individual contact in mind. I'm setting a reminder for myself. This is very easy to do from Swift as well. Just click add task and it'll set a task without being bound to a contact so you don't have to worry about all of that. I can set a task saying And I can set this one as an all day as well. Now, when I go to tasks, I'll see this appointment has appeared. Opportunity records, they look kind of like this. You can see uh, this, is the, this is our way of allowing you to track a sales opportunity. Uh, you can give it whatever title uh, you'd like. Uh, you can have the stages here listed uh, integrate directly with your CRM. So for instance, if you're using Infusionsoft, uh, these opportunities would be the opportunity stages that appear within your Infusionsoft app. Change the date and time, you can add notes. You can select projected revenue, estimated close date, and save all that directly from your mobile device. In addition, I can also see a mobile calendar view wherein I can sort of see my entire day from a consolidated, clean uh, business calendar. Now this is very useful for um, many of our clients who have guys out in the field who are just using uh, Swift uh, as sort of their to-do checklist of the day. We make it very easy for you to go down the line and see, I had this to do on this day, I have this, I have this, and I have this. And you can see all of the, the, the titles of your tasks, appointments, and opportunities. You can see the contact uh, associated with them, the addresses. And you can very, very easily hop into these individual tasks and appointments and mark them as completed so you don't have to worry about them anymore. And then that way, they're reflected on the screen with a nice, elegant check mark. Another cool thing about our mobile calendar 
aside from being pretty straightforward, simple, uh, easy to read on a mobile device, and color-coded by day, is that you can actually integrate this with a Google Calendar account if you'd like. Swift Mobile syncs directly to Google Calendar without having to go through your native CRM, and that's with two-way syncing. So with every appointment or task generated in Swift Mobile, it'd be able to sync to your Google Calendar, and then you'd be able to set reminders through your Google Calendar application on your phone. Uh, it's very cool, it's very easy, and it works uh, pretty well. Um, with this sync, um, you're even able to delete those appointments in Google Calendar and see those appointments deleted within Swift. So that's two-way syncing with Google Calendar out of the box with Swift with no configuration necessary. Going back to the dashboard again, this particular button here shows me my assignments on a given day. Uh, this is useful for our clients that use an assignment manager um, or our assignment manager to uh, assign ownership or uh, assignment of individual contacts and leads across their team. Um, as you can see, I'm assigned multiple properties um, in a, on a particular road in a particular area. And I can even look at these on a map view as I did with the near me feature. Lastly, down here at the bottom, I can see the workflow activity that's been completed. In this particular instance, I've completed three workflow activities. I did the not home for Steven Siegel. I did the interested for Billy Bob, if you recall. I can refresh these results, search if there's a lot, if there's enough of them that I can't find it at a glance, and I can change the start date and end date so that I, myself out in the field, am able to see how I've done. I can track my own progress when it comes to my workflow. In addition, we have this order section where you can see just the order forms that's been that have been completed within Swift. Um, so as you can see, that Billy Bob um, mobile roofing order form um, would be reflected here. Now what I'm going to show you are three separate aspects of Swift. Well, it's actually one uh, other uh, uh, license part of the Swift um, package, so to speak. Uh, this is the management portal. It's a separate subscription, so our clients usually have one or two licenses for it. Uh, but with the management portal, you get an appointment manager, an assignment manager, and a reporting platform. Let's go into the appointments. The appointment manager is actually a very refined, easy to use mobile calendar, or uh, management calendar, so, uh, my bad. Um, this is a team calendar, so you can see color coded at a glance your entire team's appointments scheduled across a month. You don't have to hop into everyone's individual calendar. And all these appointments are color coded. So you can see red would be Casey, green would be Charles, and uh, blue would be myself. So this allows you from a simple glance view to see what all of your individual uh, sales reps and team members have scheduled. You can look at this for easily from a week view or even a day view. Let's see if we can find a day where there's a little bit more schedule. There we go. A cool aspect of this appointment manager is that not only are you able to see your entire team's schedules across the month, you're actually able to, well, manage them. So in this particular instance, I can easily drag and drop a appointment to a different time slot. So say I want to move Casey's uh, 12 p.m. Uh, roof inspection to 10 a.m. Maybe I need his help on the 12. <laughs> So with this, I've easily changed the appointment time with just drag and drop in case he's also received an email letting him know that this appointment's been changed. I can add notes to these appointments. I can change the time this way if I'd like, or the day for that matter. Let's move them back up to 10.30. And you'll see all of that's reflected as well. In addition to being able to sort by the 
rep or if it's an appointment versus a task. You're able to also search based off the functional type. As I showed you earlier uh, with, the team, with the original team scheduler, uh, we have the ability to filter and sort uh, by different types of appointments or types of uh, activities across your team. So in this case, we're just going to see just the roof inspections, nothing else. If there was other criteria and other types listed below, you'd be able to filter by those as well. Now let me show you the assignment manager. Now this is a really cool feature for our customers who use ge geography to assign accounts. Uh, so if you have individual people that operate on a certain side of a metropolitan or geographic area and you really want to assign contacts based off of geography, based off their addresses, without having to go across your CRM and manually um, move and come up with criteria, search criteria on how to move people across uh, different areas and reassign uh, a group of people in a region to an individual rep. With Swift, we make it very easy to just do it from a bird's eye perspective. So in this particular instance, I'm going to reassign all of these contacts on the north side of town. I'm Mike Fitzpatrick. Over to me, Chris. When I click OK, all these accounts are immediately assigned as ownership or, or just assignment, the way I'm using it right now, uh, into my name. I can also very easily create sales territories. With this, we can set it up so that Swift will automatically turn all accounts in a given area um, towards an individual uh, rep across the team. So if I wanted to, excuse me, as you can see, if I wanted to just say I want people in this wonky little region to immediately be assigned to uh, say uh, Charles or myself uh, without having to manually do it each time. Um, I can set this territory up in advance and then that way each contact or company generated in that region uh, is immediately assigned to me. So if I do add new on the field and I'm in that area um, and my name is Paul, it would immediately be assigned to Chris if the territory is assigned to Chris. Now lastly, I'm going to show you the reporting platform. As you can see, these are some some of the standard reports that we have available within Swift's reporting platform. Um, we can also set up custom reports if that's a requirement of you. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you just a standard report about the results of my presentments of my workflow actions in the field. So as you can see, I can set the start date or the end date just as you would want to be able to when you're running a report. I'm going to click View Report. From here, you're sent to this screen, wherein you can select the type of interaction. Uh, was it to mobile customers or was it to mobile prospects? Was it a, a sales rep activity or was it a roof report? From this view, I'm able to see just at a glance, a report showing all of my team members and what actual um, the, what the actual results of their individual actions in the field were, and all from a numeric perspective. And this can be easily exported to XML, PDF, Excel, Word. So you're able to run the reports uh, and and work with them your way after generating them with Swift. Let's go back and I'm going to show you one more report before we uh, end this video. This, disp this disposition distance exception, say that five times fast, is a report that shows how far a field rep was from an address of a contact when they initiated action within Swift. So for instance, as you can see here, the report that I've just ran shows that uh, the field rep, Charles, was about 1.254 miles 
uh, not about, was 1.254 miles away from a particular contact and account when he said that the person was interested. Now what this means is that you're able to what this means is that you're able to track and uh, sort of uh, always know how far away that field rep was from the address. So from there you can gather, was my guy, was my field guy actually doing his job? Did I tell him to go to a bunch of houses on a particular road um, and did he actually do it? If you see multiple addresses and multiple uh, dispositions showing uh, a distance of four or five miles, you can gather that that individual was not on that street. So this allows you to keep track of your people and make sure that they're actually doing what they're claiming they're doing. And that's Swift Mobile. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or give us a call over at 904-854-6700. Again, this is Chris from Swift, and uh, thank you.